Hello, I'm Yuzu Fei, a freelance artist specialized in live 2D. Today, I'm making this VTS model setup guide because as a model maker myself, I often spend quite a bit of time with my babies to help them enhance the results we get from their commission. But a video is much more practical as you can pause it and rewind. Also, it's available at any time. <laughs> On VTS, Many different tracking devices can be used and all of them can benefit from this guide. So in order to follow this video, there isn't a specific tracking method required. Also, please be aware, for each model may have their own different naming for parameters, but also a different rigging result from one another. Now that the disclaimer is done, we will start with the beginning. In order to go more smoothly into the later steps, we will first explain how to read a parameter in VTS. Let's take my parameter for face left and right for our explanation. First, the upper part. Here, the input is what my tracking device is using for reference. So, here you can see the input is the face angle X. X is the horizontal movement. The output is what the software will translate the input into from your model parameters. What's happening here is that the face angle X from my tracking device, so what my camera sees, is being translated to the param angle X, which happens to be the movement from my character of her face going left and right. Now this bar is pretty simple. <laughs> uh, it helps make the transition smoother when said parameters changes. So for example, if I remove it, there is no swimming at all and it goes well. But if I smooth it, you see how slow down it is. I do the exact same movement, but it is moving it. And here, the exact same movement with no smoothness at all. The auto blinking will add, as it says, a blink effect to how the parameter is being read. Meaning, every now and then, on a very regular timing, it will play like this. It's blinking. It's doing the little movement on its own. It's giving it a little blink. The auto breathing will do the same type of reading to your parameter. It will slowly go one way, then slowly to the other, on this regular pace, again and again. As you can see, this is the breathing option. It goes all up, all down. So both of these options aren't practical on all parameters. <laughs> now, this hot-shaped lower part is very important. The small part on the left is how your tracking device sees your input. The number being shown on the side is how it's being read right now. If I move left and right, you will see how it changes. The taller right part is the range your rigging allows you to go between. Mine allows me to go from 30 to minus 45, meaning if I do a big movement with my input that would normally bring me further than the set parameters, it won't be able to go any further than those number as the model does not have any more range than this. And here just has on the other side, the number on the right is exactly where my model is at the moment, from the rig perspective. Both the input and the output can be limited in range. Using it means that no matter what happens, you cannot exceed the range will load it. Let's say for my streams, I only want my model to be able to look on the left. I will first identify how the output works, because I want to change 
how the model looks, not how I move. So not the input, only the output. Then, I will change it to the number I would like it to stop to. For it to be effective, and not exceed the number I've set it to despite the software telling me that I can go forever, I need to limit the range. And now, the side will be blocked by small black line. As you can see here. Now that the basics are explained, here's the thing. When you set up your model, you don't want it to track all your possible movements you can do in the room. You want to set it up for when you are gonna use it. If you're a streamer, you don't want your tracking device to be able to respond to you looking from all of your walls. Most of the time, when we're streaming, we don't look any further than where our screens are. So maybe your left and your right will be the left of your monitor and the right of your monitor. Same for the up and down. You will look down to your keyboard and not down to the floor. And you will look up to your eyes screen and not to the roof. This is very important because now this is how it goes. I will uh, do it with the X parameter again because we've seen it before. Let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna change the input so I can look at all my walls. So if I look on the left, if I look on my wall on the left, you see it says that the parameter it tracks is above 40. It's almost 50, so let's put it to 50, okay? Now if I look at my other wall. I cannot see it while looking at the screen. So what I will do and what I recommend you to do is to take a screenshot of when you have your your position, you're settled on. So here from my screen, I could see 30. So now my model can track when I look at both my walls. But during my streams, I will never go so far, so my model will be very stiff and always looking at one direction most of the time. So now I will change it from my monitors, from the far left of my monitors to the far right. So when I look at the far right of my monitor, I will go at, let's see, at 10. 10 maximum and if I look at the left I will be at 40 so now with the same exact same movement I was I was doing just before I have a much more lively movement because it, it is set it up as I'm gonna use it for streaming so I'm gonna use again the example we've done before and say that I only want my model to be able to look on the left. I am not gonna change the input because the input is irrelevant as it is my model look that I want to change, not how I behave in real life, not what my camera sees, so not the input. So we go on the output which is the taller right part and as we said before I can go to 30 to minus 45 so I have to identify which is the left so I will remove the first and put it to zero and I now can see that she's looking the way I want her to and I will adjust it until it fits what I want her range to be maybe it's a little bit too stiff for me so I will put a 10 here but let's say I want her to look on the right only. I will put 30 here and I will put 0 here. And now she's only looking on the right. No matter how I move, no matter how far I look at my walls. And then you have to do this for every single parameters that your model has. It's a very long process, uh, which is why I wanted to make a video about it because it's extremely underrated how setting up your model is important and improve the quality of it. Now some parameters you won't see in VTS. For example, you can see that my braids are 
waving left and right, those are called physics parameters, and those are set up by your rigor. Those cannot be changed in VTS. So if we go through the parameters together, here we will see left and right. So I will do what I just show you from my left from the left of my monitor to the right of my monitor, then up and down. You can do the, the Z, the Z, D, the, <laughs> the Z rotation is the tilting of your head. Here, my model is already set it up to how I like it to be red, but it, it, feel free to experiment with your model and see how you like it to be red the most. The Y is up and down, the X is horizontal, and the Z is the tilting. There might be other type of tracked parameters, such as the eyes, which all kind of goes the same way. It really does, once you've understood the basic we went through, it's all really the same. I highly recommend you to use for the mouth as the input, you use the voice volume plus mouth open and for the mouth smile, you use the voice frequency plus mouth smile. In order to see a change, you will have to go in the very first gear of VTS and go to microphone settings, you use microphone, select your microphone and then play with this number. There is a whole tutorial here that you can have with the help uh, that explains it. And then you can play around with little letters. Those are Japanese syllable, so they may not exactly fit how you speak. But you will play around them, and you will see it really does changes how your mouth works. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention, I hope you enjoyed this little guide and more importantly I hope that this will help you. Um, if you enjoyed it, we may be able to do another one, uh, maybe on the mouth and other parameters or questions you might have. But until then, I'm gonna be off. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter and on Twitch where I stream in the weekdays. And yes, thank you very much again for your attention. Take care of yourself and do not hesitate if you have any question. Thank you. Bye. Use out. Beep, 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 beep.